So when I originally built this machine, I was using ATV rims and tires and uh, brakes and hubs and stuff. But then as the machine got bigger, I thought maybe it might be an idea to actually change up to some automotive stuff. So these rims would actually fit like a Chevy Camaro, same bolt pattern. And uh, so this is a 10 inch wide rim. And uh, so I got the, uh, I got, it's, it's got a big uh, bearing carrier in it. It'll take a 930 CV joint. That's what that flange is for. And this is the brakes for the rear. What I need to do now is build the uh, shock towers for the front. See, there's no place for the shocks to mount up. So what I want to do is uh, build it like what I did in the back there. So in the back, I'm going to be using these 16 inch Fox air shocks. These are uh, two inch and they don't have springs in them. It's just nitrogen pressure right in here. So I'll probably run these in the 400 range. I'll have to see uh, once I actually run it, what it's going to like. But uh, you can put up to 500 pounds in these. And these shocks are mounted close to uh, where the wheel is. So the uh, leverage factor is not going to be as extreme as what I'm going to be doing in the front. And uh, that's okay because there's more weight in the back here. And the more you leverage these shocks, the more the uh, more load there is on the hydraulics. And it kind of like the, the damping gets kind of diminished unless you revalve it. So these are the 12 inch that I'm going to be using in the front. Also the Fox air shock. So shock mount down there. And then these, these guys are going to sit somewhere in around here. And I have yet to establish where they're going to be. But uh, so here the shock isn't nearly towards the outside edge. It's obviously sitting on the, sitting in a cradle there on the bottom A arm. And the more these shocks move in, the more these shocks move inboard, the more there's uh, leverage on them. And like I was saying before, then it starts to affect the uh, damping on them. But I think these uh, Fox air shocks, I think if I'm not mistaken, they're set up for a two to one ratio. Like they're made for, uh, to, 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 to lever them up with the geometry. So and then of course, the more you move them inboard like that, it also uh, affects the uh, damping on them also. So I think they're uh, probably going to be a good choice for the front. So we'll get them set in there and then uh, we'll see how they like it. So when I bought the engine for this project, I made sure I got the gauges and the wiring harness with it. I've even got the, uh, the fuel tank sending unit and uh, the gas cap and the keys and all that stuff. We'll see what I'll make out of that yet. But uh, so these gauges, I figured maybe if I would slip them in here behind the wheel, so it'd be kind of like in here somewhere, make them out. And then uh, it might kind of look like, might kind of look like that when a guy is sitting in the machine, you know what I mean? And so every once in a while I get somebody asks me, what's the top speed of this machine going to be? And uh, that's actually uh, more of a math question. I really don't want this thing to be very fast because then I give up low speed power because I want a lot of power in the first couple of gears. So uh, really, if, if you know a couple of variables, then a guy can get out the calculator and figure this out if you guys want to have a go at it. So we know that this engine tops out at 11,000 RPM. And uh, this is a 31 inch tire, pretty sure. And then you also need to know sprocket sizes. I've got a, I've got a 17 on the engine. Then I've got a 49 in behind. And that goes through my reverse gearbox. And then I've got a 16 tooth here. This is one to one through the gearbox. So you don't, don't have to count that. Just imagine that it was a straight shaft. 16 tooth and then I have to build a final drive here and I haven't quite determined what size sprocket that's going to be but uh, let's say theoretically if I put another 49 tooth sprocket here what do you guys think the top speed of this this engine would be so or the machine so I've given you the variables that you need to know to figure that out and uh, kind of curious what you guys will come up with so you can see I'm using this diamond plate aluminum for uh, body panels and uh, way back I actually had a even 
little toolbox there, a little storage, spare belt or whatever from the uh, Polaris ATV engine days. So what I want to do is I'd like to continue this body panel back here and you see how the you see how the frame is curved here like this so if I would if I would bend a piece here curve it around here and then it just kind of clean it up and make it look a little nicer finish it off so I'm kind of curious what this thing's going to look like with the uh, shocks done with the towers and stuff all built in the front there and uh, then this machine will actually be able to support its own weight without the jack stands and I should be able to roll this thing out and we'll be able to have a better look at it. So uh, till then anyways guys I appreciate you uh, coming in checking it out.